you know that black pepper balls are the antidote to if you smoke too much or if you've gotten paranoid? It's true, man. Try black pepper balls if you get paranoid, man. And yes, it works because when you chew on black pepper balls, it releases alpha pinene. But basically, it brings you back. <laughs> Let's say that's you all passed out on my couch, man. The trick is to really, really let it hit your nose, man. You gotta let those terps just hit your nose, man. Hit your nose, man. Hit your nose, man. Now you know more information, man, because it's up to an OG like me to teach thee, because we all get higher together, and we also sometimes get lower together. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, welcome to another episode of Drug Mythbusters. Today we will be looking at one of the most widespread myths I've ever seen. I see this pop up on my Instagram, people DM me about it constantly. I, I can't seem to escape this one. The myth is that black pepper in some way or another alleviates cannabis paranoia. And this is very poorly supported, but it seems to be everywhere. All over any kind of cannabis related media, you will find this myth published. There are articles about it, there are videos. It's true, man. Talking about how you just need to take a sniff of the special black pepper they sell. You gotta let those terps just hit your nose, man. And you can magically alleviate paranoia from weed. A quick Google search reveals a ton of different sources on this issue and a bunch of different articles. But one of the first ones I found was this one from the Chicago Tribune. So let's let's have a little look at it and see see what they claim. The Chicago Tribune, of course, is an ironclad bastion of journalism, so surely they were very careful to back up everything they said with scientific fact and hard data. The title of the article is How Black Pepper Sedates Marijuana Paranoia According to Neil Young and Science. Hmm. Not the most convincing title, but let's dig in. Next time you're experiencing marijuana-induced paranoia, we suggest listening to the wise words of Neil Young. No. Young's lyrics won't pacify your panic after smoking too much weed. Instead, you'd have to listen to a 2014 Howard Stern interview in which Stern confessed to not smoking marijuana as it makes him paranoid. So essentially, Neil Young said in this interview that he chews two or three peppercorns every time he gets anxious from cannabis. Now, uh, it's not really clear where he heard about that or why he does that, but because he's Neil Young, that seems to have caught on as a very big trend. So people think that, you know, Neil Young is, he smokes a lot of weed, so, you know, he, he tokes up. So surely he is the expert on the issue. So we're already off to a pretty rocky start because all they've told us so far is that Neil Young does it. But the article does go on to explain the science a little bit, but they don't do an especially good job at it. So to boil it down, they make a few basic claims. THC's effect is mediated by a number of other cannabinoids and compounds in the cannabis plant. This is called the entourage effect. According to an article in the British Journal of Pharmacology, terpenes may contribute to the entourage effects of cannabis-based medicinal extracts. The article claims this can be proven by eating a mango before you smoke because mangoes, they say without citation, increase the duration of THC due to the terpene myrcene. According to a Cannabis Digest article, anecdotal evidence suggests that the terpene alpha pinene is alerting, lemonine is sunshiny, and beta myrcene is sedating. Alpha pinene, the supposedly alerting terpene, is found in black peppercorns, so if it actually has this effect and you consume black peppercorns, perhaps it has some sort of uh, interaction that might cause you to calm down. And therefore, black peppercorns make you less high. If that reasoning seems a little confusing and full of holes, that's because it is. The article abruptly ends with, still not getting it? How about this? Ingesting black pepper tells your THC high brain to chill the F out. That's hard science, folks. That is super hard science. So that's it? There's no, there's nothing else? There's no further explanation here? There's no anything you can't just drop a bunch of vague claims based on neil young's weed paranoia and then draw some sort of scientific conclusion from it i mean they just they kind of pepper pun intended they pepper some studies in there but they don't really connect anything ah, the logic just the logic doesn't hold up let's break this down step by step
Let's start with the entourage effect. The idea that the various chemicals in cannabis besides THC contribute to its effects is hardly a new one. Since at least 1998, people like researchers Raphael Meshulam and Shimon Ben Shabbat have made the case for this phenomenon, and there's good evidence that it exists. For instance, when pharmaceutical companies attempted to market pure THC as a medication, most of the patients who used it found it was really unpleasant, uh, it didn't get you high in a fun way, and it lacked a lot of the medicinal effects of regular whole cannabis. We know that CBD and other cannabinoids in the cannabis plant modulate the effects of THC and they work together to produce an entourage effect. However, according to Harvard Medical School professor Dr. Jordan Tischler, the influence of the entourage effect is exaggerated heavily by a lot of people. Dr. Tischler says that the entourage effect has been overgeneralized in a lot of media reports. In a Leafly article Dr. Tischler was interviewed for, he said that the complex interactions between the cannabinoids and terpenes in the cannabis plant are not well understood or well researched. That article emphasized the lack of research around terpenes' contributions to the entourage effect. In fact, they cited a study from March of 2020 saying that terpenes may not contribute to the entourage effect at all. The researchers in this study found that the five most common terpenes, including alpha-pinene, had no effect at all on the body's cannabinoid receptors. Other studies also back that claim up. Now to be fair, there is some evidence that terpenes might have some contribution to the effects of cannabis. One study found that three terpenes, humulene, beta-pinene, and geraniol, might have some effect on CB1 receptors, but only those in the body having to do with pain relief no psychoactive effect whatsoever was found. But what about that British Journal of Pharmacology article? Well, it turns out that that article, which by the way is nearly 10 years old, was just speculation. The article discussed potential interactions between terpenes and cannabinoids, and they said that there should be further research in the future because nothing had been proven. In fact, the article explicitly states that the interactions between terpenes and cannabinoids remains unproven. Of course, the Chicago Tribune, in all of their wisdom, has a nail-in-the-coffin argument. Mangoes. Sure, they don't cite any sources for the claim about mangoes improving the cannabis high, but this must be a commonly known or well-proven effect, right? Well, no, not at all. There's no fucking proof at all. Seriously, I scoured the internet looking for a single reliable source talking about mangoes intensifying the weed high or increasing its duration, and I couldn't find shit. I couldn't find anything. There's a lot of vague references to anecdotal evidence from stoners who say that if you eat a mango, it intensifies the high, dude, but there's nothing there. There's no studies, there's nothing serious to indicate that mangoes might actually have some effect. And all of these references to anecdotal evidence don't even bother to share the anecdotal evidence. People can't even seem to agree how mangoes affect the cannabis high. The Chicago Tribune article says that mangoes increase the duration of the high, but an article from the Californian says they decrease the duration and they increase the intensity. So I decided to put it to the test, because I care about science and I'm going to get to the bottom of this issue. Okay, so here we have some legally obtained cannabis. So I have a very low tolerance to weed, so I'm only gonna take a few hits, and that should do it. And we will see if mango does in fact increase the duration of cannabis, I will report back. All right, <clears throat> I've got to put the uh, glasses of intellectualism back on here. Um, I'm still moderately stoned. Uh, it's been about 20 minutes, but we're just going to get into some of the science while we wait for this to either wear off or not wear off. While we're waiting, I want to explain some of the reasons why this might not work. The theory behind the mango effect is that mangoes contain a chemical called myrcene. Myrcene is a terpene chemical which is believed, like other terpenes, to interact with the cannabinoid receptors. But as we mentioned earlier, that's not really necessarily the case. Even if it were the case that myrcene has an effect on cannabinoid receptors, 
It's not clear what that effect would be, and it's not clear how much myrcene is necessary to achieve that effect, or what the best way to take myrcene is. In pharmacology, there's a very important concept called bioavailability. Bioavailability refers to the amount of a drug that you take that actually ends up in your system. If you inject a drug that has a 100% bioavailability because you're directly putting it in your system. But if you eat a drug, for instance in a mango, it will undergo what's called first pass metabolism, where your body breaks it down and passes it through various organs and converts certain substances to other substances. Essentially, it's your body processing the drug. So we don't know what the body does with myrcene once you eat it. Does it break it down and turn it into something else? Does it just absorb it? How much of it actually ends up in your system? And another issue, myrcene, when it's been studied, is often studied as a component of cannabis, which is usually smoked. And smoking is a different route of administration than swallowing. So we don't know how the lungs absorb it versus the stomach. So assuming I feel nothing from this, you might say to yourself, okay, Will, well, you know, you didn't really psychologically expect the mango to do anything, so of course it's not going to do anything. Your expectations are influencing your perception, and they're influencing what you end up feeling. And you know what? That's a valid point. That's 100% true. Your expectations absolutely influence how substances affect you. But that also goes the other way. A lot of people who are eating mangoes and reporting these fantastic lengthy highs or they're more intense or whatever a mango is supposed to do are probably experiencing the placebo effect. Their expectations of getting a positive effect from the mango are influencing what they end up feeling. Of course, I try to keep an open mind here and I will report accurately what actually happens, but so far no good. So now let's look at the Cannabis Digest article and all of its beautiful typos. I can't help but notice it cites nothing but anecdotal evidence for the claim about terpenes. They say alpha pinene is alerting and limonene is sunshiny, but they don't even explain what that means. That's, those are such vague terms. And <laughs> how are they determining that? Is, they don't even tell us who said that. It's just quoted as though, there, as though it's coming from somewhere besides the writer's ass. What does sunshiny mean? Does that mean euphoria? Is that, gonna, is that gonna make me happy? Is it gonna burn me with the harsh rays of the sun? Do I need to put on sunscreen? Because of the sunshiny weed? <laughs> okay. There's a fly. <laughs> the point I was trying to get across is that this Cannabis Digest article is uh, terrible. Pretty much the only scientific study that they cite is the British Journal of Pharmacology. Once again, the one that I talked about that's 10 years old. And all of these sources seem to link back to that article. And uh, honestly, I think outside of that single article about the potential effects of terpenes, there certainly is some science that suggests it, but it seems to be mostly just stoner anecdotes. And um, we don't even get to see the anecdotes, so I really don't know what the fuck is going on. I want to get back to the black pepper issue, though, while we're waiting for the mango test. The chemical in black pepper, as we talked about earlier, that's supposed to cause this anxiolytic, calming effect, is alpha pinene. Now, I did some digging, and apparently alpha pinene makes up 4% of the essential oil of black pepper. Dried black pepper, however, is only 3% essential oil. So alpha pinene would only make up 4% of 3% of the dry weight of black peppercorns. Now, let's say you have some nice big juicy peppercorns, they weigh about 200 milligrams. That means that you would have around 240 micrograms of alpha pinene in the black pepper. So Neil Young is getting nervous because he smoked too much weed, he pops the peppercorns in his mouth, he chews them in a jolly manner, and then he absorbs an astonishing 240 micrograms of alpha pinene. So unless it's more potent than fentanyl, I don't think he's gonna be getting much of an effect. I don't think that it's gonna be active in such an incredibly low dose. For reference, 240 micrograms is less than the quantity of a grain of salt. So I'm sorry, Mr. Raw Guy. I love your rolling papers, but you're wrong about black pepper. Uh, sniffing it is not a magical cure for anxiety, but it does smell nice, and maybe that will calm you down. Did you know that black pepper balls are the antidote to if you smoke too much or if you've gotten paranoid? It's 
true, man, and I'm going to teach you. Now, this comes from the very legendary Neil Young. Yes, that Neil Young. He once told Howard Stern, try black pepper balls if you get paranoid, man. Just chew two or three pieces. And yes, it works. Because when you chew on black pepper balls, it releases alpha pinene. Alpha pinene is known as the alerting terpene. But basically, it brings you back. <laughs> Let's say that's you all passed out on my couch, man, and you forgot you had to do something. But you want some black pepper balls, and poof, you are brought back to life. It happens to me all the time, man. Forgot about some appointment? I use the five alive method. I chew on five of these at a time. It brings me back to life, and when I need to, I repeat it. The trick is to really, really let it hit your nose, man. You gotta let those turps just hit your nose, man. Other terps you should be aware of, mango. If you eat know mango before smoking, those are full of myrcene, which is nice and sedating and basically boosts the effect. Lemons are full of lemonine. Lemonine is known as the sunshiny terpene. <laughs> now this is all according to Cannabis Digest Owen Smith. Now you know more information, man, because it's up to an OG like me to teach thee, because we all get higher together, and we also sometimes get lower together. <laughs> 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 Honestly, I'm already sobering up, so I have a feeling that the mango effect is also a load of shit. So here we are. But you know what? I don't think we can end on that note. It's too negative. I don't want to leave it off that way. So I'm going to smoke some more weed, and I'm going to have my producer berate me and make me paranoid. And then I'm going to snort black pepper. And all of that can be found on my Patreon. <laughs> I will publish it on this YouTube channel eventually, but it's gonna be a while. But Patreon viewers will get to see it right away. But in the meantime, guys, don't buy pseudoscience. Look into stuff. Don't believe stoner urban legends. Take care, test your drugs, and stay safe. Bye.